Hi, this is Chris from Prepper Boys Automotive. We do automotive repairs and all makes and models, and our model here is professional auto repair at backyard prices. Today I'm going to teach you how to flare a standard double flare on a 3 16 inch brake line. Okay, there are several different types of flares that you use on anything from brake line, uh, fuel line, power steering line, etc, etc, etc. This one, we're, this segment we're only going to be con concentrating on the main flare, uh, most common, which is a double flare. This is used in a lot of GMs, older products, that sort of thing. There also is a couple different other flares known as bubble flares, which you'd use something a kit like this one. All these kits are going to look very similar, but the little chucks here, these bits, will be very slightly different different. Maybe a little blurry so you probably can't see it that way. Well, I apologize. This is, a, this is a bubble flare kit so it actually has a bubble instead of a double flare. This is our standard double flaring kit. Very similar to this one except this one doesn't have a built-in cutter in it. And there is also this kit which will make a metric flare kit which mostly is used for European and some Japanese vehicles. Once again very similar in the kit. The only difference is the actual size of the block and the actual fitting. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 3 16 inch line. This is brake line. This is the very most common size brake line in most vehicles. And first off we're going to put our other kits away and get that out of the way. So now we can concentrate on our actual 3 16 line. Now I'm just going to go over a few things of exactly what each of one of these components is. This is your block. This is actually what you put the 3 16 line or whatever line you may have according to which size it would fit in. This is what holds it so you can actually flare the line itself. This is, also, this is known as a press. There may be other names of it, but this is what I call it. This is actually what forces your actually chuck down to actually make your flare. You have your rod that actually goes through the chuck or the actual press, or however you want to call it, and it gives you the leverage you need to actually pry it down. And then you have these fittings here. These come in anywhere from, this kit actually goes from 3 16 to 1 half and these are the little fittings that you would have to actually flare the line. Probably a poor picture because of the distance, but they all are very similar, just have different ties, rods in the middle of them. Okay, first thing that you're going to need to do to flare this 3 16 inch branch line is to cut it with a tubular cutter so it can actually get a nice round lip like this one. I've already gone and done that. Um, this is the tubular color. All you have to do is install this actually on your 3 16 brake line. While turning it, you're going to turn this, turn this knob and get tighter and tighter every couple turns or so until it finally breaks off. You'll also need to ream the actual brake line because sometimes you'll actually get a lip on it, which once again I already have. You can use a screwdriver, a knife, or some kits actually come with a reamer in it itself. Just be careful not to damage the line, okay? From there, we're going to be taking our 3 16 or I'm sorry, our block and placing in this hole, which is the very smallest, which is the 3 16 line, and then I'll continue how. Okay, now what I've done is I've actually positioned our 3 16 inch brake line inside the actual block. Now how you space this is actually rather important, okay? You're going to take your actual flare bit here, and it may be a little hard to see this at first, but on here there's a very bottom little step, okay? What you do is you put your 3 16 brake line in the correct hole, and then you take your actual flare bit and set it on here. You're going to get the actual level lined up with the actual line coming out. So that little step will be lined up with it. From there, you're gonna actually take your bar here, put it in the wing nuts and tighten it down pretty tight. If you don't have this very tight, the line will be pushed through and you'll have a very crappy flare at the end of it. Don't tighten it down so much to the point where you're gonna break these off. These do break if you get too much pressure on them. From here, we're gonna take our flare bit, put the actual rod directly in the center of the 3 16 inch brake line. We're going to take our press, and I'm going to wind it back down so I can actually get it on the line. I probably should have done that beforehand. Okay, we're going to fit it over, and on the point, we'll put, we're going to put it 
if you can see this properly, probably not that well, unfortunately. I'm going to put the point directly on top of our flare chuck. From there, we're going to take our bar once again and start forcing the actual bit down. This will take a little bit of effort. As you force it down, it's going to get a little harder and harder every single time. Sometimes it's a lot easier to actually mount this in a vise so you have only one hand doing this. You're going to force it down to the point where you can't tighten it anymore. Once again, you don't need to go absolutely crazy to tighten this down. From there, you're going to loosen your press. Which, by the way, if you tighten that down too much, you're going to have fun trying to get that loose. You're going to remove your press. You're also going to remove your flaring chuck. Once that's been removed, you're going to put, take your press once again, and you're actually going to run down the cone directly on the center of your single flare as of right now. Once again, you're going to take your bar and tighten down. Now at this point, you don't need to go very hard because you can actually damage your flare doing this way. You're going to run it down until you start getting a good amount of resistance, like what I'm getting right now. Once you've done that, once again, loosen your press, remove the press completely, and you're probably going to need to use your bar to loosen the actual block, just because if it's nice and tight, it's not going to come out very easily. Take the wing nuts down. And, and this is what you're going to come up with. Now, this double flare did not come out as perfect as it should. I think I actually had the arbor press at a different angle, the wrong angle. Okay, but this is a general what a double flare is going to look like. Now, however, I didn't put an actual fitting on this line because this is just for demonstration purposes. But once you've taken this down, you'll put your, your fitting directly up here and you can thread it into whatever you are going into, a line, wheel cylinder, whatever, etc, etc, etc. Now, if it comes out like this, you're going to need to redo this. Once again, I did this a little sloppy. Um, other than that, so you're just going to make a fitting on the other side as much as you need it. This does take practice. It does take a little bit of skill to get this down. Um, of course, the proper equipment does help. A cheap flaring kit typically won't do it because it'll slide right through the block. But however, most people is not going to want to spend over $150 for a decent flare kit. Uh, if you like the video that you've seen, please subscribe with the information below, your name and your email address, and I'll continue to forward these videos on to you. Thank you for viewing.